Yo guys, what's going on? It's Lewis here with Crypto Elite. Today's date is September 9th, 2021. It's 4.11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I'm about to go through a market update. I definitely should have been doing these market updates way more often, and I have just been getting settled into my new place. I got my new setup. I got everything down. So now that we're all really here and and ready to go i'm doing my market update today and i'm going to be setting market updates every single monday so monday morning i'm just going to wake up and do my market update and uh spend pretty much all day on it so i'm going to be doing that for you guys totally for free and uploading that for uh to youtube to help you out as much as possible and then on Tuesdays, I think I'm going to be doing something like a technical analysis Tuesday where I go over really big concepts uh, within technical analysis and I'll have those videos be updating uh, my course. So the course will be brand new with a lot more information as well. And you'll get snippets of those videos also. So there's a lot to go over. I've also uh, made a few videos that are being edited right now and will be uploaded soon. Uh, bot videos, uh, videos on big news stories, videos on um, different technical analysis, fundamental analysis stuff. There's a whole lot of stuff coming. Um, it's just taking a while, sorry, but we're getting into it now and uh, things are finally on their way. So awesome news. And so I have the chart pulled up right here. I have, this is uh, tradingview.com. I have the chart pulled up. I'm gonna be going over the total market cap and I'm just gonna be going down from total market cap to the dominance levels, to the prices for Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, XRP, uh, DOT, Solana, Quant, of course, Cardano, Doge, all of them plotting out key levels. And then I'm going to put those into the chat in the discord group i'm gonna put the big ones like bitcoin and ethereum and stuff into the free chat and i'll put the um more lower cap gems into the vip so we're gonna get into this right now i have a document that i created that goes over my market scan and i'll pull that up right here the last time i did it was august 19th so i definitely need to do an update which is why i'm doing it right now so this is september 9th 2021 uh, first thing that I always mention is that I use three commas for my uh, trades. This is how I execute my buys, my sells, my take profits, my stop losses, everything like that. I use three commas. This is the platform. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I have videos on that and I'm making more videos on it. But yeah, this is the three commas that has algorithmic crypto trading. It has AI crypto trading bots. It, it's a cloud software, so it doesn't, it rarely goes down. Um, I haven't had too many issues with it. And yeah, it's just the best place to buy, sell, uh, or to place your orders from the exchanges. So I use three commas, and if you want more info on three commas, or if you want to sign up for it and start trading with it, you can go to three commas.io um, and then use this little link or, you know, question mark C equals crypto elite. You could also find that link in the via or in the resources channel in the crypto elite free crypto elite channel um, discord server. And you can see it right here. You save 10% off your subscription by signing up through this link. So just want to mention that's three commas. Also, I am wearing crypto rays. If you don't notice, these are blue light blocking glasses. You go to getcryptorays.com and you could get a pair for yourself if you choose to want to protect your eyes. I'm in front of my screen literally all day. So uh, I have these glasses and they're pretty awesome at protecting my eyes from the blue light. Uh, next thing is that I will update the charts if there's any need to update them, if nothing has changed from the previous week. For example, you know, I put my ideal buy zone down and it's still not hit, but the price is going towards it. Then I don't need to um, update my charts again, but I'm definitely gonna have to update my charts because so much has happened over the past couple of weeks or yeah, the past couple weeks so that I, I need to update it. So you're going to get fresh new charts uh, literally like today. Uh, another thing really, really important, especially given that this is a bull market and I do believe that the bull market will continue for a very long time 
is that I have two accounts. Okay, so I have a obviously I have a trading account. This is like the stuff. Most of what I share with you on here is like the trades that I do. Right. But I also have an investment account. And I think that everyone should have an investment account along with their trading account because you there's sometimes you just don't know what the prices will do. And there has been a lot of studies that have proven that the best um, I, I guess the best investors in the world are the people who set it and forget it. The people who just buy and hold for long periods of time and don't try to mess with too, with it too much, with their investments too much. So I have two accounts. One of them uh, is an investment account where I just simply buy and I average in. And I do do very, very minimal trading on that account. I only trade to accumulate more cryptocurrency on that account. I don't care about the USD value because in you know years time as years as the years go by and time passes by the cryptocurrencies will continue to go up in value and you want as many cryptocurrencies as possible or you know of the very very good cryptocurrencies if you have let's say you have solana you have ethereum you have bitcoin you have a uh, polka dot you have um engine coin you have maybe star atlas as a gaming coin or alluvium or you have quants of course you have these coins that are very 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 good you want to have as many of them as possible so in my trading accounts i trade them against usd mostly uh to accumulate more usd but then i have my investment account where i just put it in and and i just hold it or i trade it against uh the cryptocurrency and i try to get as much cryptocurrency as possible because th that's my longer term portfolio and it's like it usually works out really, really, really good for most people if they have at least uh, a couple accounts or, or one account that they just don't really touch and they just buy stuff with it. So wanted to really, really put that out there. Uh, the other thing is that I have signals, I have charts in my ideals, ideal buy zone channel. In my uh, VIP, I have alt signals and I have alerts that go off. These are, you know, those are the trades for the most part, but I am also adding alerts for big investments and big investment opportunities in the Discord channel. So if you're in the Discord, you will see that. If you're not in the Discord, join the Discord. You could get access to the free one. Um, by going to my social media links and just you know either twitter or uh instagram or just click the link in the bio i'll have a link in the bio for it as well um and then if you like what you see there or if this if this is very valuable to you then you could join the um vip anyway so going on if there's any stuff that's confusing um Oh, of course, if there's anything that's confusing, just take the Crypto Mastery course, or of course, you could contact me in my Discord group and I'll answer any questions you have there. You go to CryptoElite.com for that course. Um, and I highly, highly, highly recommend you do that, if you're, especially if you're going to join the VIP, because the way I do it is a little bit different than most, than most people. Uh, I also have four things that I keep in mind when trading. I have this like very, very special five wave golden ratio, Crypto Elite, um, Elliott Wave Fib strategy. This is explained in the course. It's also explained in one of my free videos, uh, and I'm going to be putting out more, more about this. And this is like probably the best uh, RR, best, um, most highly probable trade that I, that I know of. So that's why I have this, you know, just to remind me that if I see it, it do, it's very rare, but if I see it, then I go in extremely heavy when this plays out. The other thing is that if you see a coin coming down to the $1 level, $10 level, or $100 level, something like that, that's very uh, significantly psychological, it's a big psychological number, then I usually like to go in really heavy at those numbers because, you know, people, the average consumers tend to do that. And so I want to like play those levels as well. Also, when alts are going up against both USDT and a Bitcoin terms, that is when they are the most bullish as opposed to going up only in USD versus only Bitcoin. So you have to look at both the USDT charts and the Bitcoin charts, because if you do that, then you'll know whether or not to hold uh, the altcoins or to hold Bitcoin. And there's definitely times to hold Bitcoin and trade against Bitcoin. And then there's definitely times to hold, um, you know, USD and trade against USD when it comes to alts. Uh, that's, um, that's something that I need to look at. So uh, looking at all of this, I think we're good with that. Overall, big picture, this is what I wrote uh, uh, months ago, I believe, is that in 2013, we had a major drop from the highs, then we went sideways, then we shot up, and we made a huge recovery to new all-time highs. This is a very likely scenario. This is because the Fed and Congress will most likely decide to print more money to try to stimulate the economy. People have been investing their stimmy checks, and the crypto goes up. Also, the market has been going up despite a lot of the FUD over the past 
two two to three months so i'll i'll you know put like two th two two three months um minus what happened uh, the other day when the SEC or when Brian Armstrong came out and talked about how um, basically confusing the SEC was being and how they weren't having regulation and how they're they're just sort of being a pain in the ass. So most of the time, the crypto for the past three months, the crypto has been going up when the good news came out. Uh, of course, yesterday or a couple days ago, there was the SEC thing. And then there's also the El Salvador thing where everyone was supposed to buy cryptocurrency in El Salvador. And then, of course, the price tanked. Uh, that was sort of like a buy the room, sell the news type of event. I don't know. We'll see about that. And also today's or this month is September. September definitely is a negative month for the majority of months. Um, that like most of the time, September is a negative month in both traditional finance and uh, cryptocurrency. So got to be cautious in September. We'll see what happens. I do believe that whether or not September is flat or negative, that we will see a huge growth in um, November. We'll see some steady growth in October, some huge growth in November, huge growth in December. That's what I'm, that's what I am, I'm hoping for. Uh, hopefully we'll see a repeat of like 2017, something like that. And that will happen. Finally, uh, let's look at this. So, okay. So I had some notes that I took earlier, uh, or not earlier. I took like th this month ago, the last uh, months ago, the last time that, that I did the, uh, market update, April, January, March, April, May, June, July, August, August in, uh, late August. So basically I said that the uh, total market cap bounced on the 61.8 Fibonacci bottom, then busted through the midline. It's now above the range highs. Local top may actually be in and we could see a few red days. Um, yeah. Okay. So this was actually from a while ago. So we saw this and then let me just read through here. Okay. Pretty much. I'm going to update all of this stuff uh, as I go through, as I go through the, uh, actual market update and look at the charts. Then the first thing that I do is I go through these things, the MVRV Z score, uh, and the rainbow chart, the fear and greed index, total market cap, all this other stuff. So let's start off here and look at the MVRV score. Let's click on here and we see that it basically bounced from the previous lows, sort of like was expected, came back up. And this is what I said back in 2013, it did something like this. This was the price in, in 2013 and the price went up like crazy or went up like crazy and then came down, had a really big crash, right? For just a short period of time, but then it bounced back up and then crashed a little bit down and then went stagnant for a while before, before going way, way, way back up later in, uh, in, you know, 2013 in November is really when it started going up October, October, actually October, November. Um, and that was, that was 2013. And you could see the MVRV score came and, you know, went super, super high, came back down, never actually got back into the green and then started bouncing. So look at this right here. It came up really, really high, came back down, bounced, never got back in the green. And now it is, you know, mm, I guess you could say it's sort of like the equivalent of over, over, over here. Oh, oh, and look at this. This is nine. This is uh, September. And in September, Bitcoin sort of was pretty, pretty stagnant in September. It didn't, it actually didn't really do much in September, 2013. So maybe we'll see the same thing where it's sort of stagnant in uh, 2021 this year. Um, and then you know, in October, it just booms up. And then uh, obviously like October just booms up like that. That would be pretty, pretty cool. And then the MVRV score shoots up into the actual red zone, like it was over here and like it was over here and like it was over here. And that is going to be a really, really big indicator that I'm going to sell or that the top is in. Um, there's also, I also will make another video on a huge thread by the crypto lark that talks about how to know whether or not the top is in. And uh, I'm gonna make that video right after this one, actually. And so, yeah, the MVRV score, it basically looks like it's on points, you know, this the same thing as, as it's been for a while now. Um, 30K, it, it, basically 30K was the floor uh, right around here. And now it's bouncing up. And I sort of, according to this chart, I, 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 I expect, Bitcoin to go sort of stagnant this month and then really boom up in October and November. Um, but there's a lot of things that are changing, you know, constantly. So we'll see what happens.
but that's pretty much what the MVRV score is saying. Then we have the, or what I'd like to do after the MVRV score is go into the rainbow chart. And last time Bitcoin was in the HODL zone, this was uh, last month. So it, right now it is still, I believe, still in the HODL zone, yes. So basically don't buy, don't sell, you know, it's a good, this is the good zone to be trading in uh, around here. If it goes down into 36,000, then it'll be fairly cheap. If it goes anything below that, then of course, that's where you start to accumulate and accumulate and accumulate as much as possible. This is where the big whales always like to accumulate. It's where the big players accumulate is down in this, in this zone. Um, I really don't see it ever coming back below 30k but you never know you know you never know what can happen if it does go into a fire sale it could go all the way down to like 15k but honestly with how many institutions are now in it how many funds are now in it i just i really don't see that happening um i think 30k is the floor and if it comes down to 30k uh, i will pretty much be all in it could go down to 15k after that i really don't care um so yeah it's in the hodl zone uh, if it if it comes into this if it comes into this maximal bubble territory, I'm gonna I'm gonna sell as soon as it gets into this as soon as it gets here. I'm selling um, 50 percent of my I'll sell 50 percent of all of my crypto um, as soon as it gets into maximal bu bubble territory and then probably put stop losses on everything else. Uh, so yeah, we got that. Uh, th so things are looking good when it comes to the Bitcoin rainbow chart. All things are also looking good in the MVRV score. Uh, so the next thing I look at is the fear and greed index. Under 10 is automatic buy. Over 75 is to start scaling out unless we are entering into a full-blown uh, bull market. Last time it was at 70, which didn't really tell that much. So the fear and greed index is at 45. So it's actually pretty good. Last week was 74. And we had that big crash, so it wasn't quite, or it could have, maybe it was at 75 uh, one of the days, but it was 74 last week, and now it's down at 45, which is like fearful. So as Warren Buffett likes to say, buy when people, or has said, buy when people are fearful and sell when people are greedy. Or he says, be greedy when people are fearful and be fearful when people are greedy. So right now people are fearful, which means that I want to be more greedy. So that actually shows what it is currently at 45. Um, want to be more greedy now. Okay. So we got that. Uh, then we go into the total market cap. I wonder what this was a chart that I posted a while ago. There should be a, I don't know if this is just a simply, um, oh, this is just simply a link. I might have created an actual, might have created an actual thing. Okay. I didn't, I didn't create an actual uh, chart to, that you could press play, but this is pretty much what I said. And now that I, we have this, what I could do is I could go into the Chrome, I mean, uh, my actual trading view chart, see what happened. So that looks to be 1.95. So this was when it was just about two, I want to say, or is 1.88 around here. I said it was going to go down, go up uh, 1.88. So yeah, right around here, it went down. Um, it went up much more quickly than I anticipated. And then it came all the way up in here. And this is why I am now for real, like seriously going to be doing my market updates literally every single Monday, because if I would have just like looked at, I, I plotted this out a while ago. If I would have just looked at this, um, I would have known to be like way more cautious because we came in to, you could see right here, this huge resistance. Let me go to the weekly and you can see it better. And I wrote this, I wrote this, um, let's see if I, let's see if I have this here. Uh, we'll most likely see a pull back around this area. We'll sell 50% of my portfolio as soon as it touches here, then sell 5% more every day. Ultimately it will surpass here. When is the question? And that was at 2.4. So yeah, I sort of screwed up majorly by 
not looking at this and seeing that it that it hit here and then fell because it literally fell on the dot um but how awesome is that that you could predict this stuff literally weeks in advance because if you look right here if you look when I, I wrote this august 17th this was from august 17th and i literally said okay i'm gonna sell 50 percent here if I followed my rules, it would have been freaking great. But now I have, um, now I have an assistant to really help me with this. And he's going to be like really on my ass. He will literally slap me in the face. If I do not look at my charts every single day at this point, and which is great for you because now I'm going to update you guys, um, every single day and in, in case anything like significant happens, but you know, you live and learn. Luckily we had a big bounce, uh, which is great because, even though we lost um, or I lost quite a substantial about, uh, min amount of money uh, the other day, I regained uh, some of it back. And I know that a lot of people, especially a lot of people in my group, ended up not really losing that much at all because we were in Solana and we were in Quant. Um, so props to props to everyone who was who followed who followed the rules and followed literally what I what I put out. And uh, now I just need to follow it more, more closely, more accurately. But this is, this is the total market cap right here. Okay, so we have the total market cap. Uh, let's see if I, if I wrote anything really uh, significant. Okay, so basically I, I think that the new floor is 1.2 trillion. So 1.2 trillion. Yeah, so this was the new, this was, this was like the floor from that I wrote like way I think I think it was all the way back here in March or something. I was like 1.2 trillion is the freaking freaking floor because this is where I like Michael Saylor started buying like all over around here and um I know a lot of like funds started buying around here. A lot of big money started buying like right around here. Well, not right here, but like right here. Um right? So then when it came back down, more started buying over here. So I was like really in and that's how that's how we were able to actually get in, you know, at the loads, which is pretty awesome. So if it ever comes back down to 1.2 trillion, that's that's again where I would be going all in. I really don't see it coming down below here. But at this point, we went up so much that I don't even see it coming back down below here again. Uh, so honestly, if we take the Fibonacci from the bottom to the top and we look for the 61.8, this is the new, this is sort of like the new floor for me. Um, so I would wanna be going all in and yeah, I'll say, I'll say this is the new floor. So the floor keeps on going up, right? Uh, as the price goes up, the floor goes up. So this is a new floor for me. If it, uh, reaches here, I'll go, I'll go all in, um, at least for a period of time. Yeah. So I wrote that down and let me make it a little bit more accurate or more clear so yeah this is the new floor for me uh this i don't think it's going to reach 1.2 again but we will see if it comes back down uh I'll, I'll i'll grab i'll grab a ton here because it will bounce from if this was the top it will bounce from here and come all the way up to at minimum 1.94 trillion dollars uh so what can we see from the total market cap? Basically, we could see that the total market cap came in to the not the daily, not the daily close. It actually it actually dropped just before the daily close because you can see if I bring this up right here, this was the top. This was literally the top of the market back in May. Uh, well, not not literally the top, but this was the top of the close or the close of the top of the market back in May. Uh, it was 2.46 trillion, and we did not reach 2.46 trillion before the dip. We reached 2.438 trillion, so just a few billion dollars below, a couple hundred billion uh, dollars below the um, actual actual top. But we did reach the close, and or did we actually? Oh, we didn't even actually reach the, the, the close of the top. We, we only reached the, 
I don't know what this is called, but it, it, right before the actual top. But we reached right here, which is like sort of like the main top. This this looks like some some type of special candle that usually happens after tops that just like it sort of like creates a blow off. Um, but it's not it's not real. It's hard to explain. Uh, but this it's like this is the true top right here, and then this is sort of some something to trick a lot of people. This is like a manipulated top, pretty much right here. Uh, but it, we did hit the true top, uh, and then and then fell. Of course, of course, instead of going, going in, instead of following my plan I, I, and selling half of my portfolio, I end up uh, buying even more uh, like an idiot. But regardless, I'm going to be checking it a lot more now. So now what happened? We fell down to the 38.2. This is what happened. We take the fib from the bottom to the top. And look, we fell, we fell from the resistance. What do you know? Hit the resistance, fell, hit the 38.2 and bounced. And maybe if I go to the four hour, we could see a better we could see a better picture of this. And so we hit the 40, we hit the 38.2 bounced, came back down to pretty much like where it was. And the 200 moving averages and the 200 exponential moving averages on the total market cap really helped to, along with this big support area, this huge cluster of support, this whole thing is like support, right? Uh, really helped to propel the, the price or the total market cap higher. Um, so now it's, on the four hour, at least, you could see that it came. This is pretty much the top right here. And this is pretty much the bottom right here. Like bounce, 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 rejection, 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 bounce. And then it did have this area, but this bit had a lot more over here. So you can't really put it exact number on on where the bottom is but i would say this is sort of the bottom and so it had this long 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 wick so when it has a huge candle when it has this capitulation type deal of like 17 percent off of the uh, off of the total market cap you know there's there's probably going to be a freaking bounce like there, there was a bounce across the board with everything you know everything went down like 40 percent, and then everything bounced back up uh like 30% or something like that. So, so if you see a giant capitulation, you want to buy, 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 buy at the bottom. The problem that I saw that I noticed with this is that I had my alerts going off, buy, 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 but there wasn't even enough time to buy. I, I went in to buy not very much long after, after it, you know, my alerts went off, the prices were already back up 20%. You have to have these these buy orders in, and I I think honestly I feel like it was the the exchanges that did a lot of this. I think the exchanges had a big part in this because it's like the prices rebounded so so quickly, and I get it, like that happens, but that's that's also that's why you need to have limit orders in, or that's why you need to have bots, or that's why you need to have uh, the orders in already previously, just 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 in just in case something happens, you know. And uh, that's why, again, that's why I use three commas. So things are looking pretty bullish for the total cryptocurrency market right now, considering that we had the big capitulation uh, candle, it came back up, fell back down. Um, and now, and now if it, if it reached here, you know, if it reached this resistance right around here, especially just below it and then crashed back down, that would have been really bad. That would have, that would have signified that the market is in like turmoil, but it bounced back up and it actually had a close above the previous closes and then obviously uh stagnated a little bit and then moved back up so now it moved back up and and it came back down to a good support so for the total market cap according to the total market cap pretty much right now we have the total market cap look being at the new support because this is resistance 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 now it's support support and now it's support again and now it's back at support plus we have the 200 ema and 200 move uh ema right here on the four hour at least on the daily we have it um on the daily on the daily we're on the weekly averages uh i mean <laughs> excuse me on the daily we're on the uh, uh more on the 21 uh, exponential moving average and 
we're still at support and on the daily as well we have three more hours to know but this is like sort this is a, basically like an indecision candle this this previous days and now today it's green which is usually a good indicator if there's an indecision candle and then the day after that is green then that usually is like okay well they decide that the market is going up so that makes me bullish plus the fact that the fear and greed index is down in the fearful range in 45 plus the fact we're in, we're still in the hodl uh, in the uh crypto rainbow chart and the mvrv score is looking good uh overall overall looking bullish and then along with all of this the other thing that i want to say is that we are in a bull market right now like clearly we're in a bull market we've been in the bull market for like a year and a half or something the real bull market, I, I believe, started in March 2020. That's when I believe the bull market started. So from March 2020 to March 2021, that's one year. And then we have, I guess, six months later. So it's like a year and a half of a bull market, right? And we had from January 2018 to January 2019 is one year to January 2020 is two years. So we had like two years and three months of a bear market and bull markets are always, always, always way, way, way more longer than a, uh, than bear markets. So that's why I don't think that this bull market is over. I think like we experienced some exponential growth, but I, I think that we'll experience even more growth later on, uh, maybe in, in October, November, December, because I believe that this is a multi-year bull market. I like multi multi year i don't see it slowing down i don't see it stopping i think we passed that paradigm shift and i think we need to go up way higher before we actually uh go back into an actual bear market obviously you need to use proper risk management and all of that but like i'm definitely still being more risk risk on i guess you could say in terms of overall and also speaking of my overall strategy um, I will have a video that will be going over my overall strategy coming out very, very soon. It, a lot of things have changed, especially since um, I made a lot during this uh, this bull market. So now I'm changing things up and I think that would be very, very helpful and, and pretty useful for you to see what I think would be a really good strategy. And so going back into the actual market strategy um, checklist or, you know, whatever market market uh, scan checklist, um, we went through the MVRV score, the rainbow chart, the fear and greed index, um, and then the total market cap. So now we have the total market cap excluding Bitcoin. And so if going back to trading view, we could go to that chart right here. And this is pretty crazy. This is the total market cap excluding excluding Bitcoin. Let's clean this up a little bit. Let me pause this and then um, do the chart and I'll be right back. Okay, guys. So I just cleaned up the chart a little bit for the total uh, total market cap for uh, everything except for Bitcoin. So I'm real. I'm going to be looking. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm going to be looking at the, these markets every single day of my life from now on. Like, un unless something ridiculous happens, like, again, an accident, a car accident or something, like, I'm not going to leave. Like, I'm literally not going to stop because the accuracy is just too good. It's just everything is just too accurate and there's way too much money to be made. Um, so <sighs> expect a lot more videos, a lot more content, a lot more charts, just everything coming out because it's just absolutely insane so i'm looking at this right now right this is the daily we can see this was previous resistance came down um and what we'll do now we is that we plotted out the horizontal supports and resistance levels that's very very important that's pretty much the first thing that you want to do is you want to plot out the big uh major support and resistance levels we did that now what i want to do is i want to take the fibonacci's and i'll just do it from left to right i'll do it from left to right and if we do go from left to right, from the bottom to the top, Fibonacci, come down to the 61.8. What do you know? This right here was the 61.8. It hit that exactly. So I'll make this green and I'll say this was the 61.8 golden fib uh, from bottom to top of 
first wave. I guess we'll just call that the first wave, right? Of, so, of course, it bounced from here. That's how I was able to get in, you know, at this was because of this Fibonacci right here. Um, but obviously, I should have been able to get out right here. Anyway, uh, first thing I do is I take the Fibonacci from the bottom to the top and I look at that. Okay, cool. We have that. We have that down. Usually, it comes up to 38.2, bounces from the 61.8 back up to the oh wait it did that it bounced from the 61.8 up to the 38.2 it actually went above the 38.2 in this case um and then dropped back down and it usually does that twice i want to say so it did do it twice and then this was a really weird situation over here but it ended up coming back down hitting it again double time and then obviously had that huge nice run up back to the resistance level big 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 resistance we had this nice crash so let's see where the fibonacci from the bottom okay of here to the top of here puts us and we're going to do it on the close so that it's in line with the previous fibonacci and if we look at that we'll see that it came down oops it's a little bit more accurate uh to Actually, what we could do with this one, I always try to make it as accurate as possible. Interesting. So on the close, the 23.6 hit very accurately, but on the high, the 38.2 and the 50 hit more accurately. So I'm going to do this. Uh, and if you look at this from the, from the bottom to the top, you can see it hit the 50%, bounced back up. Then the next day it came down, hit the 38.2, and now it's on its way back up. What you'll also notice is that the 61.8% golden ratio from the move bottom to the top falls in line with the 38.2 bottom to the top of the previous move. And to be honest, what I should have done is I should have taken the Fibonacci from the top to the bottom of this move. So doing that, this is what we could see. Okay, so two things that I could see using the Fibonacci, or three, a lot of things I could see using the Fibonacci right now. From the top to the bottom of this move, of this you know first wave down, or hopefully only wave down, uh, the 61.8 is right here. It came up to the 61.8, and this was a much bigger rejection than any than here, here, or here. This was the first multiple day rejection, and then it had some you know resistance over here. Obviously, ended up going right through there. Then it came back down to 38.2, which was also the 61.8 of this move down, which was also the 23.6 of the entire move up. That's fine. What's the more important thing is that we could use these Fibonacci's to dictate where we think the price will go to in the future. Um, so if we look, this is a very big this area is a very big area. This is the first area that I want to plot out. So I'm going to do template red. Um, this is also another very big area that I want to plot out. So I want to do template red right here. These are all possible areas, possible areas of um, where, where it might actually get resistance, right? Uh, so this right here is the uh, 161.8 of the move up this right here and it's also the 261.8 percent uh, of the move down and what we could also do is take this bottom right around here top right around here right there bottom right there okay and this is going to be the Fibonacci extension and we can see Fibonacci extension oops this right here lines up lines up very well. This is the 100% Fibonacci extension. So 100% of the move, okay, 100% of the move from the bottom to the top, back to the bottom is right here. 
This also lines up with the 161.8 of the top to the bottom and the negative 61.8 from the bottom to the top. So this is a huge, huge area of resistance. If it reaches here, I'm just going to freaking sell 20% of my portfolio. Multiple fibs line up here as resistance. The next one that lines up is right here, which is the 61, negative 61.8 of the move up and the 127 of the move uh, of the Fibonacci extension. Another big resistance, so I'll put that here. All right, so I just did a little bit more of uh, you know the Fibonacci stuff, and these Fibonacci's are really really accurate. They're really good. So I took them and I found two huge huge levels of resistance. The first one is right here at 1.912 trillion dollars for the crypto total market cap, excluding Bitcoin. Why is this the big one? Because this is the 100% Fib extension. As you could see, it's the 161.8. Uh, retracement from the top to the bottom and it's the negative 61.8 from the bottom to the top so there's lots of confluence right here so if the market does something like where's the thing if it you know let's say it I don't know, does this and then it comes up and whatever hits here I'm going to take the majority of my profits right there next thing up is this right here uh, and then I'll re, I'll re, I will rebuy. I will definitely rebuy, but I'll take a lot of profits here. And then I will um, sell most of my stuff right here as well. This is negative 61.8, uh, 261.8, 161.8. So this is another huge confluence uh, in terms of where the price of the overall cryptocurrency market cap, excluding Bitcoin, will go. So this is basically my analysis for this. So let me publish this to the... Uh, to the market scan to the group and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're going from the market caps, the total market cap of Bitcoin, uh, excuse me, the total market cap of all of cryptocurrency and then to the total market cap of all cryptocurrencies excluding Bitcoin. And now we're going into the dominance levels. Excuse me. <laughs> um, so the dominance levels, the first thing that we look at is Bitcoin dominance. Bitcoin dominance used to uh, be very, very, very high all the way up here, right? Then as altcoins started to gain popularity in 2016, it dropped slightly. And then 2017, when the ICO boom came about, the alt, the uh, Bitcoin dominance started falling very, very, very heavily. And altcoins were the biggest, biggest thing ever. It fell all the way down from basically 100%, all the way down to 36%. So that means that um oh there's only what is that like 65 percent or so of the entire market was comprised of altcoins um when bitcoin came all the way down here bitcoin was only at 35 percent and then of course that was the bottom uh you know january 2018 and then everything started uh retracing and and bitcoin dominance started um basically getting more and more and more which means that the total market cap all of the money that was in cryptocurrencies went back into bitcoin a lot more went back into bitcoin it cycled back into bitcoin and that's where we have the cycle where it goes um bitcoin let me write this out real quick actually i don't need to write it out it's right here this is the money flow in crypto uh, fiat to Bitcoin and then into large cap cryptocurrencies, mid cap cryptocurrencies, then low cap cryptocurrencies. And then you can see back into Bitcoin. And that's the money flow that crypto follows. And you can see that uh, the dominance chart, it was mostly Bitcoin. And then it flew into all of the different cryptocurrencies. And then um, it flew back into Bitcoin all the way uh all the way back up to here as in terms of the total market capitalization the price for bitcoin um and all cryptocurrencies went down but relatively speaking the price for bitcoin or or the amount of money that went into bitcoin was much 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 greater than alts so 
that's something that's definitely something to know. Bitcoin is always the first or has been historically been the first mover. And what this says is that as Bitcoin dominance rises, alts can take a hit. That's because money is flowing into Bitcoin, usually from alts. Even Bitcoin can fall. You know, the price of Bitcoin could fall as Bitcoin dominance rises. And that's what happened during the bear market is that um, the price of Bitcoin fell, but the uh, price of altcoins fell drastically more and the amount of money was, you know, going into Bitcoin. That's why the dominance of Bitcoin went up, uh, even though the price was falling for everything across the board. So what this says is that if it keeps going down, then alts will continue to move up. If it goes up, then alts will continue to go down, at least against Bitcoin. But they could also go down against USDT as well. Uh, a really good, you know, parallel to the Bitcoin dominance chart is the altcoin dominance chart, which this is what the altcoin dominance chart is. Excuse me. There's all this, all this stuff over here. But um, basically, what this means is that as the altcoin dominance chart rises, more money is going into altcoins, and altcoins are taking up a larger and larger percentage of the actual market. Um, so. You could see, you know, it reached all the way up here and then came back down to the 200 moving and 200 exponential uh, moving averages for the weekly. And uh, now altcoins have been rising up and up and up and up. So altcoins have been doing very, very, very well ever since uh, December 2020. Uh, going back to the Bitcoin dominance chart, this is because I want to go through the charts one by one. Uh, I'm going to go through here really quickly and then I'm going to, uh, you know, tell you my analysis. Okay, so something that I noticed right now, which is actually very important, and I'm gonna update my group right now, is that the Bitcoin dominance level is coming down back to where its previous low was. And this was in May. And if you remember what happened in May, that's when we had that huge crash. So this is a little um, worrisome, I guess you could say, because, because this is a big, big, big resistance for altcoins. Uh, and usually when this moves up like this, money flows back into Bitcoin. So will money uh, flow back into Bitcoin? I don't know, but I'm definitely going to use this information to hedge my trading portfolio 100% because this is the previous um, support for Bitcoin dominance. And it, it makes more sense, you know, if I pull pull the altcoin dominance chart up. Basically, there's a big resistance right here for altcoin dominance. And when altcoin dominance hits big resistance, well, altcoins tend to really take a shit. They they end up going down a lot. So I do expect. Um, in fact, I wrote this out months ago. Apparently, possible reach. I do expect a retrace here. Uh, but I do expect it to be short-lived, and then I expect altcoin dominance to jump back up, um, and then you know make a double top, and then probably end up coming back much higher, uh, possibly October-ish. But this is actually considering that it's only the 9th of September, and this is very very close. It it's painting a picture that September won't be very good for alts. So I am going to start to hedge my bets over here. Okay, so going back to the dominance levels, um, I definitely want to start hedging my bets as it comes down into this level. So uh, even though it's only like, let's say 2%, um, that seems very little, but for dominance levels, it's actually sort of a lot. So I'm definitely going to keep an eye on this every single day. Uh, I think what's probably gonna happen is that the total market cap um, and you know most cryptocurrencies are probably going to come up and then somewhere around here um, e either either at the top the same top or maybe a little bit lower they might crash for the mid to end September and then um, make a rebound start you know rebounding in in October so that's what the Bitcoin dominance levels are telling me right now one cool thing that I did see with this, though, is that if you take the Fibonacci from the top and let's just say that, you know, that does happen. Let's just say that um, there's somewhat of a crash uh, when it comes back down to the previous uh, support area for the Bitcoin dominance charts. Then if you take this and you bring it down to the 61.8 golden ratio, you could actually see that um, there's all of this, all of this like support slash resistance, you know, support right here. 
um, and areas of confluence like over here and even over here. And you know what they say, they say that uh, support turns into resistance. So if it does come all the way back up here, it's the 61.8 golden ratio. It has some uh, support resistance zones. Obviously like this is also a really, really big one. So it's difficult to say, but at least if it comes back down to the previous area, um, this is this is still a good place to get back into into alts. Of course, though, there's also the option of it just coming down here, doing a look quick spike up to like here, and then uh, just coming back down and having a huge super cycle for alts. That's definitely a possibility as well. Oh, and I'm not sure if I actually zoomed out to the weekly uh, on this video yet. So I just want to show you on the weekly time frame what the deal is because you have to start out on the longer term time frames always and then zoom in. So pretty much on the weekly time frame, you could see that there is uh, some stuff going on over here. And then, and then obviously this was the big crash and now it's back. It's coming back down into it. Um, so on the weekly time frame, we never really... Uh, we never actually hit that area yet, the lows of the previous previous lows yet, um, but we're getting there. And uh, so I do expect volatility, And that, but but ultimately I, I want it to come back down. And I think altcoins are gonna do much more, uh, be much more prevalent this cycle as well. And I think it's gonna come back down and um, at least to over here, you know, at least the, the all time lows. And then if we have a super cycle, then it could honestly come all the way down to 33% uh, to 32% uh, Bitcoin dominance. And I could totally see that. So that's Bitcoin dominance, right? And then we have um, altcoin, basically altcoin dominance, uh, which is 100 dash BTC dot D. And you can see that this is the previous high, right? For, for altcoin dominance uh, back here. And so when altcoins reach this level, um, I definitely want to get hedge my bets and like take a lot of profit off the table. Um, but right now it's the same thing like it as, as Bitcoin dominance, you know, except it's the inverse. So it's almost here at the previous, at the previous highs and then the previous highs right here are where it crashed. So I'm expecting it to come up a little bit more, which means that money will be flowing into alts, you know, most likely for the next week or so. And then I think, and then I think it'll crash. I mean, is it possible that it'll pop up and just keep on going up? Yeah, it's to it's definitely possible, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm thinking that it's, it, it would be safer to hedge my bets right there. And that's the altcoin dominance chart. The positive thing that I could say for alts is that, um, went to the 23.6 of this huge, huge, huge run up. Right. Um, and then it sort of just stayed within that range. If we take it from the bottom the top, if we take it from, you know, here to here, it stayed within the 38.2. And, you know, I guess now that I'm looking at it, this is probably the more accurate one just because it hit the 38.2 once and then twice. So normally I want to get in at the 61.8, but honestly, I would probably want to get in right here if it does ever come back, you know, come back to this level. Will it? Honestly, sort of highly doubtful, but it's not a bad idea to uh, to get in here. Because unless unless there's like a crazy um, bear market happening and all alts just like are going down like crazy, it'll, it'll definitely bounce from this area. Cause there's not only the 38.2, but there's also the 200 day moving average and 200 exponential moving average. So, uh, yeah, there's all of this and I would actually probably move this up to the 78.6, even though could reach the 88. Um, I would want to front run it again at the 78.6. So if, if there was a bear market, uh, this is where I would want to buy my alts, to be honest. Um, so yeah, I actually wrote this a while ago, so that's pretty good. And then of course, if there's a, uh, super cycle, then I would just think 60 to 70% is where, is where I would want to get the hell out of alts. Um, because that would mean that it's at a brand new, brand new all time high. And like Bitcoin would be only taking up 30% of the, of the market cap at that point, which would be like nothing. Uh, and that doesn't really happen. So yeah, that's pretty much my thought process overall for this. We'll see what happens.
Oh, I guess one more thing that I just added was that you could clearly see there's a huge um, support line right here. So if this altcoin dominance level falls beneath and closes beneath this, I would want to get out of my alts after it, they bounce, after they make a bounce off the 38.2 and maybe retest this or come close to retesting this. That's when I would want to get out of them because it's such a big, uh, res it would become such a big resistance, just like this line right here was a big resistance, right? One, like this was the first tap and then this was the second, third, fourth. It just couldn't get over here. But right when it broke through here, this was my signal to get into alts. Um, originally I was waiting for somewhere lower, but as soon as it broke here, I said, okay, we need to get into alts now because it broke through this really, really big resistance. So the same thing happens with support. If it breaks down and breaks through the support, um, I'll wait for a for a bounce in my in my alts and then I'll I'll get out because you don't really know it could probably come all the way down here to the 61.8 if that's the case uh, or even to the um, moving averages if that's the case so that's just one other thing that I wanted to mention and now we could actually go into prices of the different cryptocurrencies so we're gonna start with Bitcoin of course go down to ETH go down to um, I'm just going to go through as many as I possibly can. So here is Bitcoin at the whatever. I don't know what I don't know what uh, time it is, how long this has been. But we're going to start with Bitcoin. I'm going to do this chart or make my charts and then I'll be right back. OK, so we're going to start off on the monthly Bitcoin chart to get a good picture. And if you take the Fibonacci from the bottom to the top, you can see that it came down and bounced right off that 61.8 Fibonacci sweet spot. Normally, um, if it's very bearish or not very bearish, but if it's um, not extremely bullish, what happens is it comes down to the 61.8, comes back up to the 38.2, and then comes back down to the 61.8. Uh, we're on the monthly chart. Let's see, did it do that on the weekly chart? It didn't even do that. It didn't actually do that on the weekly chart. So um, this was more like, this is actually more of like some accumulation i guess you could call it like manipulation by people by the whales to accumulate as much as possible down here instead of being like a natural bounce and it's actually sort of a it's actually sort of positive in the fact that it came down here and then had this accumulation phase and then just had this run up as opposed to coming down here coming up bouncing off the 38.2 coming all the way back down and then and then bouncing 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 and then falling back lower but um still Right now, all that we know is that came back, came down to the to the golden ratio and bounced back up, and it came above the 38.2. It actually, I guess you could say it hit the 23.6, and now it's on its or it, and then then it started to fall down. That's pretty much all we could tell in terms of the monthly chart. So let's go down to the weekly chart, and this should this should be my weekly chart right here. Yeah, it is. And I'm going to just uh, do a little charting on here and I'll be right back. Okay, so here's something uh, quite interesting, which is that if you take the weekly Fibonacci from, you know, the bottom to the top, just like before, you know, I said it hit the 61.8 multiple times. Boom, 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 boom. Um, but on the way up, guess what? It also hit the 61.8. Eight. Isn't that crazy? It actually went uh, slightly above it, which I think that threw me off a little bit. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to close above it. Normally it closes uh, either pretty much directly on it or uh, just just below it. Um, but this is technically between the 61.8 and the 65 is that like golden pocket. So it hit the golden pocket and uh, I definitely should have uh, been much more risk off here, I guess. It was in my analysis, 61.8. Like, I didn't, like, this was here beforehand. Um, 61.8, big resistance, selling here, rebuying at 42K. Uh, so I guess it didn't actually hit the 40, uh, 42K. This is on the weekly chart. So on the daily chart, I, I said to rebuy at, the, at 41K. Uh, but on the weekly chart... Oh, 43K. Look at this. So so this is what you do. I'll do this real time. I took the Fibonacci from the bottom to the top. Then I took the Fibonacci from the top to the bottom. And now what I'll do is I'll take the Fibonacci from the bottom to the top of this. And I'll see that the 38.2 was around 43,900. So 
this is where I would actually have wanted to get in. So you want to get in. Um, it's like this. Let's say none of this happened, right? And it's all the way back. Let's say it's all the way like here, right? Okay, so you know that it, it's bouncing off the 61.8 like a bunch of times, and this is major support. So if it falls beneath here, then um, you have to wait. You have to. You have to. This was. This is actually a difficult, a very difficult situation to to think about because if it falls and it closes underneath here, say it closes at 2800 or 28. 500 then technically speaking if it close oh this is the weekly if it's if it closed the weekly below here then it, that would be very very bearish right for at least a, a short period of time um but in the context of what's happening what you would do is you would take the fibonacci see that bounced off here then you take the fibonacci from the from actually this level uh down to this level and you would look for the 61.8 right around here. And this is where you would, oh, man, I need a, hold on a second. This alert just went off. I have to make sure that I delete this. Um, so yeah, so then you would look for the 61.8 and you would say, okay, I'm gonna sell here at the big resistance. And that lined up really, really well with this. And then you would, you know, put your sell orders in weeks in advance. And then if you press play, you could see obviously like it came up and, uh, and hit it and now it's back below it. So the fact that it did this, this is what really threw a lot of people off is the fact that the weekly close, um, went back above the 61.8. That's just like that, that is very, very difficult for any trader to, to realize if you're only looking at the numbers, if you're only looking at the Bitcoin chart, right? Because we did, you could say we came up here and then we had the rejection right here. This was the rejection, right? And so it's like, okay, we got the rejection and now it closed back up here. So this was like a very weird fake out close. Of course, if you take it from the very, very, very top and you bring this up here, then yeah, I guess this was a, uh, a normal, oh my God, I guess this was a normal close. Give me one second. But what we do know now is that, you know, it came up and it hit the, hit the Fibonacci and it came back down. So this is what, this is the one that it hits. So, uh, you have to take it from here. Although normally if it hits there, then this is what you do. And I guess technically you could do this because these were all wicks. And then if you look right here, this is the body close. And I don't know if you remember me saying this earlier in this, in the, in this broadcast, but the 61.8, it usually closes at the 61.8. So this is an example of it actually closing at the 61.8. So this, I guess we could just simply move this up. Usually what I do is I take the Fibonacci from the same place. Like I find the place that works and then wait a minute, actually, yeah, this actually is the where you should take the Fibonacci from because I, I look at it from here, right? This one, and I see that this came down and tapped the 38.2 right there. So I know that tapped the 38.2 right there. And even though this one was in the zone, it didn't go exactly at the 61.8. This one ended up going pretty much exactly at the 61.8. And then this one ended up same thing and same thing. So this is actually the, the right Fibonacci for this. It's a skill to understand how to use Fibonacci's for sure. Um, but like, so I guess if we took it from here to here on the weekly, you could see 61.8 is right here, big resistance. So I would sell and then basically wait to see what would happen this week, whether or not to buy, I would sell here and then I would put my buy orders in over here and I would start out on the weekly, um, and then go down to the daily. And what I would do is I would take the Fibonacci from this level, the bottom down to this top and I would see, okay, the 38.2 is right here. So this is where I would buy. And I would say, I would just put this uh, like this, 38.2 buy price. Uh, and then the other, the next buy price on the weekly would be the 61.8, which would be right here. So if we're using these Fibonacci levels, this is where I would buy the next, the next uh, support if Bitcoin were to crash if Bitcoin crashes, and this is something that you could, that you could put to the bank, if Bitcoin crashes, 
I highly, highly, highly believe that we will get a big bounce off of $38,500. So buy here. This is what I am doing. I am buying here. Okay, so now I am bringing this down into the daily chart. So we started off, I believe, on the monthly and then the weekly, and now we're in the daily. And this is just the levels plotted out on the daily chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in uh, some buy orders at 43250 bucks, And uh, I'm also going to put some stink bids of really large buy orders in down here at the uh, 38000 $38,000 level because uh, this is the 61.8 golden ratio of the of the move up um, on the weekly. So yeah, just around 38, 38 something. I'll probably want to front. I'll probably like bring it a little bit higher. I'll probably do it like that to front run it. But um, still, yeah, this is a, these are my two buy zones for Bitcoin. Uh, normally, I'm pretty, I'm expecting at least 44,000 to be hit because normally it, it falls and it closes, uh, here, not always, but sometimes, and then it bounces. So I could totally see Bitcoin falling down again to 44 K. Um, so that, yeah, that's, that's big. All right. So now let's go into Ethereum. We're going to start off on the weekly chart. You could see that um, if we take the Fibonacci from the bottom to the top of around $4,000, had that huge crash in May, came and bounced off the 61.8 multiple times, made its way back up to the previous weekly close right here. It closed just above it, but then of course got, uh, got rejected. So this is now a big rejection point Preferably what we would like to see would be like the price doing whatever it wants to do, right? And then coming up here and then just like consolidating and then moving back up or even just like that. Like that would be obviously ideal, but you never know what's going to happen, right? So what we can do is we could take the Fibonacci from the 61.8 down here up to, up to here and see if there's any type of area that looks looks pretty good and even though this is the weekly but um we might we might be able to get a little bit of, be of a better picture on the on the daily so going to go into this chart right here and then i'm going to look at the daily so we plotted this out and this is the uh monthly all-time slash all-time high but this is the daily all-time high. And so perhaps we have the weekly all-time high is what we should be looking at. So I'll put this as, uh, excuse me, copy paste. I'll put this as weekly, weekly all-time, weekly highs, major resistance. And then of course this is the monthly high or the all-time, the all-time high was right here. Okay, boom. So, actually, was this the monthly highs? No, this was the monthly highs. What am I talking about? This was the monthly high close. Um, so basically, that was just that's just all time high, and that's obvious. We don't even need to say this. So it would be this boom, all time high. Oops, this is not what I wanted. All right, cool. And so, yeah, we got rejected off of the weekly high, off the weekly highs. And now the question is, where are we going to bounce from? Uh, well, if we take the Fibonacci from the bottom right here to the top right here. Honestly, it looks like we came down to the 23.6, bouncing a little bit here, back and forth, back and forth. I would say 3111 is probably, I would bet more that we go down to 3111 than that we go up from here. So I'm gonna place this as a green and I'm gonna say 38.2 supports buying here. I'm gonna label that. And let me see if I could find anything else and I will get right back. 
Okay, so the two main areas for Ethereum are definitely uh, right here at 30, basically 3,150 and also 2,600. This is the 38.2 and this is the 61.8. They both have a lot of confluence to the left. You could see major supports, major resistances, all for both of them. Also, this one has the daily 200 moving average and 200 exponential moving average, which are really big um, support zones. And so, yeah, I would put my orders in here like this. You, I would not buy right here just because, I mean, it's it's so it's close to the highs. It's, it's almost as close to the highs as it is to the lows. Uh, but I don't really know exactly what to expect from like this uh particular price action i guess you could say yeah we could we could just do a bart i guess and come back up but normally it's like you know we had this wick right here right and then we came back up well we had like a wick here and then like we came back up and then we came back down and then we came back up you know and obviously we had like a couple more times to come down so i think it's safer to just get in at the 3,200 and uh, 2,600 area. If we take a look at ETH versus Bitcoin, looks very, very similar. Looks very similar. There's a clear range. There's a very clear range between ETH Bitcoin uh, at 0 0. uh, 0.058.42 and, you know, 0 0.082 or I suppose this now which is 0 0.079 the key thing about these doing ethereum versus bitcoin is that you have to look at the dominance levels uh the dominance levels for alts look like they're gonna go up at least a little bit so that makes me more bullish on alts very 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 short term but excuse me but look it's coming into this big resistance right here so of course you need to be very cautious uh so once it comes back in here so it's like if it was let's say it was like here like anywhere here 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 or here or here or here i'd be super bullish um and i would want to be way more into ethereum than bitcoin but or i would i would want to be trading Ethereum against Bitcoin. But now I almost want to trade, not almost, now I would prefer to trade Ethereum against USD. And then once this comes back down, that is when I would want to go back into Bitcoin and then start trading ethereum for bitcoin um or at least once the uh dominance levels come back down to a good area that's when i would want to be trading against bitcoin but right now especially after this big dump and everything i think just trading against usd is pretty good because you don't know what bitcoin is going to do you know, if Bitcoin was looking super strong, then I would be like, okay, but it's almost just like right in this zone. Maybe if Bitcoin like hits here, right? Or if it hits, if it hits here, then I'll go all into Bitcoin. And then when I'm in Bitcoin, I will then be trading against Bitcoin. But like right now, this is Ethereum versus Bitcoin. It hit the resistance. This whole resistance zone right here, I guess you could saw, say that this entire thing is resistance. Um, and then fell. It would have been really nice if it hit here and then I would have went back into Bitcoin, but it doesn't always work like that. Okay, yeah. The, honestly, this is pretty confusing because it came all the way back up to the 61.8 and then it's just like it hit it. Well, it, it didn't hit it. It came just below it, right? Like just below it. Normally it hits it. So it came just below it. And now it came all the way back. It came back down and then jumped back up. 
unless I'm missing something here, you know, unless, unless I do it like this, but this right here wasn't anything. This was not even any Fibonacci. So it's very difficult to know exactly what fib level is working right now with this because i'm not seeing much on the um much on the weekly chart but this is the one that i would assume would be the one that uh would work because just below the 61.8 uh but it, i was really hoping it would you know hit it and then i was going to sell but all i could do now is like have the price jump up jump up here and there's a lot of still a lot of resistance from back here a lot of resistance right here maybe these this was simply people front running uh the cells that they knew that would happen because of all of this resistance right here and all of this resistance right here there's still a lot of resistance it's only going to be the second touch uh on the daily i mean on the weekly on the daily there was one touch yeah the, on the daily there was only one touch also so yeah, it's uh, it's definitely something that I'm not entirely sure of in terms of clarity, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it come pretty much anywhere in this entire region and and then fall back down. Like, look at this. This is the 61.8, like right here. 826 and it got to freaking it literally got to 824 like 0 0.23 0 0.25 away but it didn't touch it like it normally touches it which is why i'm like damn because if it touched it and came back down i'd be like okay i know exactly what's going on here but you know this is very this is pretty confusing all you could really do is play levels to levels at this point uh, all I know is that this is the resistance right here. This is the support down here, right? This in, and I guess if you want, you could have this be the midline right here. So if it comes down to here, this could be a good longing area. Of course, this is the best, this is the best longing area. And I'll even bring this up slightly. So. If it comes down here, I'm definitely going to be buying it. Obvious, it's like pretty obvious. I will be buying Ethereum right here, or switching out my um, Bitcoin for Ethereum at least. But it's it's almost like it's too high. I don't like playing the mids because you know it's like look at this. Like it hit the mid, you would have sold here and then and then bought here and then sold here and then bought again here, like this is much easier. You buy here and it goes up, you know, or you sell, you should sell here and it goes down, which it should have been right here. But you, you see what I'm saying? Anyway, that's Bitcoin. That's Ethereum against Bitcoin. Not much I could really say about this. Uh, if it comes up here, I'll sell it. If it comes down here, I'll buy it. Next up that I always do is the DeFi perp. Uh, so let me just change this to the actual date and I'll do the, some analysis on this and, uh, let you know what this is about. So pretty much for um, the DeFi index perpetual futures on FTX, um, if it comes back down here, this is the ideal buy zone, obviously for obvious reasons. So I'm gonna buy a whole ton of it down here. And if it comes to the all time high zone, which is pretty much up here, uh, that's when I'm gonna sell it. There's uh, not too much uh, other than that. There's this midline here. If it comes here, this is a nice little trading opportunity. Uh, definitely a, a pretty solid trading opportunity, to be honest. And this could literally be, you could literally have it just do that. Um, but for safety or not for safety, just for like more, more, I guess, guaranteed profit type deal, you could have it be uh, pretty much over here, which falls in line with these uh, previous support resistance, turn resistance levels. Um, and also obviously you front running the top so that would be pretty good for that uh it, it's not looking too bad though with the art i'm looking at the macd right now and the uh and the rsi looking pretty solid not too bad so yeah i have this and i put this in the uh, vip so i'm gonna go on to quant the amazing never-ending quant network 
All right, so for Quant Network, Quant Network is really just an absolute beast of a project. And so I never really want to um, actually sell my Quant. I just want to accumulate as much Quant as I can. So if we look at Quant, obviously, if you know me, if you pay attention to me, you'll know that I've been accumulating quant for a very, very, very long time. Uh, and I had one mishap where I sold it and then I bought it back like 60% higher or something like that. But uh, after that, it's like, <laughs> yeah, after that, I, I just really don't want to do, I don't want to mess with quant, you know, because it seems to go up. Quant is something that seems to go up when the market goes down. It's It seems to just continually outperform everything, except for like, you know, Solana and a couple other things, right? But yeah, Quant is my long-term hold. I want to accumulate more Quant. I don't really care about the USD value. I just want more Quant, not more USD. So what I do with Quant is I actually use bots that I hook up to three commas and I use those to accumulate more quant over time. So I will simply buy it um, if it falls and sell it when it uh, rises a little bit and then buy it back when it falls, sell it when it rises. And I'll just keep on doing that over and over and over again. Um, simply with a bot, let's just look at this. Yeah, so on Binance, that's the way to do it. You could also do it on FTX. Oh, wait, no, you can't do it on FTX. You could also do it on Coinbase Pro. And uh, I believe on KuCoin as well. So Quant, I'm not like, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to mess with it. I just simply wouldn't want to mess with it. Um, if it comes, I guess what you could do is you could take the Fibonacci from the bottom to the top. And then if it reaches 256, that would be, that would be the place to buy it or to buy more. Um, but yeah. And I guess the thing that I'll say about bots is that I do actually have, um, I have videos that teach you how to create bots on three commas. So if you want those, you could go to my discord group. So I'll pull those up right now. So in my discord group, I have a, a channel called three commas videos in that channel. I have video one, video two and video three. That goes over setting up your first bot and understanding the basics, setting up your second bot and understanding safety orders, and setting up your third bot and understanding composite bots, which is the secret sauce. And I have all of these videos. They're private videos, but they are available in the free Discord group for free under the three commas videos channel. So if you'd like to see these videos, you could sign up or not sign up, but you could just simply join the Crypto Elite um, discord group for free and then go here and you'll see these channels. And this is what I use for quant to accumulate more quant. So moving on from quant network, we could go to Cardano and Cardano is one that has done extremely, extremely well. Um, it could possibly, you know, go up higher, but one, two, three, four, five. This actually sort of looks like a five wave, to be honest. Um, I'm going to do something real quick. First off, first and foremost, if it ever comes back down to this level, this is the new, this is the new ideal buy zone. Let's say, let's say it just does terrible and crashes and goes all the way down. Um, this is where I would buy it right here. 1.234. Very, very cool. So that's definitely a good place. Uh, the second thing to know is 
the 61.8 from this bottom to this top, which is right here, the 61.8. So this is also a buy zone and I'll have that in there. All right, guys. So I actually passed out and now I'm back to it. Wait a minute. Here we go. All right, guys. So I actually passed out and now I'm back to it. So we just went through ADA USD and I gave 1.82 as the good buy zones. Now we're into um, ADA against Bitcoin and um, it hit my it actually freaking hit my sell zone perfectly. Don't know why my alert did not go off for cardano but regardless uh, i still have the alert down here and this is now decent support this is actually really good support so let me um do this really quickly and get back to you in a second okay so for cardano we uh, against bitcoin you could see that the 200 moving averages and exponential moving averages are making their way up if we take the fibonacci from the very bottom to this very top which coincides with this uh, previous resistance right here, you could see that the 61.8 uh, comes down at 27.98 Satoshis and the 38.2 is also a really, really good entry, um, coincides with a lot of this confluence over here to the left. So I would start off by putting on a trade right here, right? This would be a trade. And then if it reaches here, then this is where I would simply buy and hold um, and just go in, you know, go in heavy and buy and hold. So this is my plan for Cardano against Bitcoin. Um, and if you do the shorter time frame Fibonacci from the bottom to the top, this is this just around the 61.8 is still in the golden ratio. So 61.8 on the golden uh, on the shorter time frame, 38.2 on the longer time frame. So I think that that's a pretty, actually a very good entry um, if you're playing against Bitcoin. And going down from Cardano, obviously we have to talk about Solana. Absolutely crazy, uh, crazy, crazy, crazy run up with Solana. Honestly, might not even be a bad time to sell here. I, it's so, it, like, look at this. <laughs> this is this is actually sort of crazy how how big this run up was for Solana. Seven hundred forty seven percent. Okay, so for Solana, um, the daily is just clearly too ridiculous to plot anything out. But if we take the daily, we take the um, Fibonacci from the bottom to the top, and we go to the four hour, you could see a little bit better of a picture, which is that the thirty eight point two support is right here. 61.8 support is right here at 90. So at 130 and at $90, those are the two entries. So this is entry one and then this is entry two. Um, so what I'll do is I'll say I'll buy a lot here. And if it happens to come down here, I'll buy way more. Now, will it actually reach these levels? I have no idea. But if they do, I definitely got to get into them. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put this into I'm actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if it reaches here uh, I'm going to say make sure to have your uh, buys in at the at the key buy levels I'm just going to put that right there and that way if it drops to here then I'm going to have a buy order in down here um, or maybe I'll just put buy orders in here uh, just just regardless just to have them in just in case there's a, some type of flash crash or something because that's totally possible um, we could see that on the daily um, it could easily come all the way down here and still be extremely extremely bullish okay so next up is a BNB and we're gonna look at this uh, you could see BNB had that insane run up um, and, you know this this BNB had a run up of 5,000% let me just check something out real quick. Look at FTT. So BNB had a 5,000% run up. What is the run up? Here it is. What is the run up on this? 2,000. And FTX is gaining a lot more market share. So let's say that it did a 5,000% run up. 
that would put FTT at $174, which is approximately uh, 136% greater than where we are right now. So, wow. Oh man, I definitely want to get into FT FTT if it reaches $63 because look at this previous high, lots of consolidation jumps up, boom, boom, damn. I don't think it, I don't know if it will come back down here. If it does though, that would be a really good, that would actually be a really good buying opportunity is at $63. Okay. So I'm taking a little detour from BNB and I'm, and I'm just putting in my quant orders here at 63 and uh, 49. So just a heads up, I'm doing that. But now we can go back to BNB. Um, unfortunately, BNB is not available on FTX. It's only available uh, in their futures markets, which is like, it's getting very annoying. Very, very, very annoying because I switched from Binance to FTX and FTX it does not really have anything. And it's like, yo, I'm trying to trade here. So it's almost like, it's almost like, what should I, should I even plot these out? Because it's not even available, you know? So anyway, uh, I almost want to just skip, just skip B and B and shit, you know? But I guess if you're looking at B and B, you could start off on the weekly and, uh, simply just take the, just notice, notice what happened. Take the Fibonacci from the, from the, uh, bottom to the top hit the 61.8 and then you take the Fibonacci from the top to the bottom 61.8 hit there crash down. So now you take it from the bottom to the top over here and you can see this is the 38.2. This is the 61.8. So this is the major support right here. This is where I would want to get in uh, probably right there at $355. And you know what? I think I'm going to end this right here because I am honestly, I'm getting a little bit pissed off at the fact that most of my money is tied up in an exchange that I cannot get my money off of that does not offer as many coins as all of these other things. And I can't use their futures platform anymore. So, um, I put out a lot of different coins and this entire video is an hour and 35 minutes long right now. So I'm going to have to edit this down and, um, make sure it's all good and then upload it. It's going to take a while. So I'm going to end this here and then I'm going to go over some other coins. I'm going to go over some other things. I'm going to start doing my bot video. And, um, yeah, the only thing that I could say, if you got this far, uh, plot out the key levels, you know, don't get FOMO follow your set of rules that you have and uh, make sure that you continue to be intelligent in your trading and your investing and also have an investing account that you average into. And with that being said, um, also, I guess I need to say, if I didn't say this already, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Always do your own research, all that other good stuff. So I'll talk to y'all later. Hopefully this was informative. Peace out. Keep on stacking those sats. Later.